As the guerrillist forces relentlessly surged through Tajera, leaving destruction in their wake, President Wiza, facing the harsh reality of an unstoppable invasion, called for negotiations. The proposal was clear, Tajera was willing to become a vassal state under guerrillist rule, seeking to maintain its sovereignty and prevent further bloodshed. However, guerrillist authorities dismissed this plea, escalating the conflict with even greater intensity, claiming more civilian lives in its wake. Amidst the turmoil, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Wizu, stepped forward, recognizing the dire need for a diplomatic resolution. Similar in age to Ruta, Wizu proposed the idea of approaching President Ruta for an armistice. The condition, Tijera would willingly surrender, guerrillist, sparing its people from feudal sacrifice. Despite the pragmatic nature of the suggestion, President Wiza, consumed by pride and determination, rejected the notion of surrendering Tijera to what he deemed a tyrant, faced with a leader unwilling to consider alternatives, Wizu retreated, leaving President Wiza to his unwavering commitment to fight until the last drop of blood. The war continued, an unequal battle with a predetermined outcome. President Wiza's refusal to surrender, fueled by pride, overlooked the unjust deaths of thousands of Tajera citizens and the inevitable sacrifice of tens of thousands of soldiers. The decision made that day would shape the destiny of Tajera. Echoing with the consequences of defiance, as the conflict raged on, the once vibrant cities of Tajera lay in ruins, their streets littered with the debris of war as the relentless advance of guerrillist forces continued unabated. President Wiza watched with growing despair as the dream of victory slipped further and further from his grasp, leaving only devastation and despair in its wake. In the corridors of power, President Wiza grappled with the weight of his decisions, haunted by the knowledge that his pride and stubbornness had condemned his people to suffer needlessly. But even as doubt gnawed at his conscience, he remained resolute in his determination to defend Tajera's sovereignty at all costs, unwilling to bow to the tyranny of the guerrillists. Meanwhile, Minister Wizu watched with a heavy heart as his efforts to broker a diplomatic solution fell on deaf ears. Despite his best efforts, he had been unable to sway President Wiza from his course of action, leaving Tajera to face its fate alone against the might of the guerrillist war machine, as the days turned into weeks. The toll of the war grew ever more devastating, with casualties mounting on both sides as the conflict spiraled out of control. Yet still, President Wiza refused to back down clinging stubbornly to his belief in the righteousness of his cause, even as the world around him crumbled, but as the inevitable outcome of the war drew near, President Wiza found himself faced with a bitter reckoning. The once proud nation of Tajera lay in ruins, its people broken and demoralized by the relentless onslaught of guerrillist aggression. And in the end, it was not pride or defiance that had saved Tajera, but the selfless sacrifice of its people, who had fought bravely to the last, even as their leaders led them down a path of destruction.